Guys, I'm super excited to be in the studio today playing with my large format gel press plate. And as you see, I am going to be playing with some super funky kind of tropical colors and dropping them apparently is what I'm doing today. So um, I'm starting out with my cool color, so my blue and my green, and using that as my base. Because what I want to do in this particular video is I'm going to do... Um, basically the same prints but I'm going to reverse the colors and you'll see what I mean here in a minute so I'm using this super funky stamp by our friend Kat Kerr and, and you can see it has this great kind of four pattern thing going on and I laid it directly on top of my wet paint and I'm just taking a baby wipe and removing the blue colors that are uh, that's exposed in the stencil and what that's going to do is it's going to leave the stencil shape of the blues and the greens underneath. And now I'm going to go back on top of it with um, kind of a bright orange and this kind of purpley pink color, um, which is almost the color of my hair, which is kind of funny. And then you can see I have over on the right just my small gel press plate. Um, that allows me just to kind of brush off those colors for whenever um, I need to switch it up. So I'm just lightly brayering my orange and pink across my stencil. And when you lift, voila, gorgeous, right? Um, and what I love about this is it's allowing me to do one print. Um, I'm kind of, you can see I'm stamping my stencil over on a, just a blank piece of paper just to get the, the wet paint off. And I might use that for something else. And I'm just using plain copy paper because I'm going to be cutting this up later so it didn't have to be super thick. Um, but you can see what's great about this stencil and about doing this color combo is I'm going to peel it back here in a minute and it's once I cut it up for this project that we're going to do at the end, it's going to look like I did four separate prints because of the different patterns and the different colors. And so you can see I'm not even going to clean my plate. Um, and now I'm going to go down with my pink and my orange and I'm basically going to do the exact same technique. I'm just going to do it in reverse where my warm colors are on the bottom. And just getting those kind of just brayed across with my gel press brayer and cleaning it off. And then doing the same thing. Um, plopping that down. I didn't clean it in between. Sorry, cat. Hopefully that's not a faux pas. Um, and again, doing the exact same thing with just a wet um, baby wipe. Always a staple in my studio for cleaning my hands, cleaning my brush, doing a project like this. Um, smearing paint around. Um, it's great for blending distress inks, so baby wipes are great. And you don't even have to get the expensive ones. Your plate doesn't care. Um, so now I'm going to take my blue and my, this color is actually called pistachio mint. It's one of my new favorites. Um, and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did last time. I'm just going to brayer on top. Um, when you have a stencil like this that has very small um, openings, you want to give it just a little bit of pressure because the, um, the way the gel press will work is it will actually press up into the stencil. It's called the durometer, but we call it the squishability. Um, it has that give factor that will allow you to get a nice crisp stencil image. So once you've got your stencil firmly down, don't be afraid to kind of just press down lightly with your brayer so that you get that good crisp stencil image in it. And you can see I'm going to pull this up. And I love it. I love it. Yay! So there is my two separate, um, uh, I guess, prints. And now I'm actually going to move my plate. Normally I don't have it on this big white um, piece of cardboard, um, but since uh, not piece of card, piece of poster board. Um, but since I was doing this video and I wanted to make sure you could see those colors really bright, I did throw it on there, but it's not where it normally lives. Um, and I'm actually going to do our project today in uh, a Dina Wakely, um, I think it she just calls it an art journal or a journal or something. Um, random stuff I've done in the past or haven't finished apparently. So I'm going to take my prints 
And I want to show you the print side by side so you can see the, the contrast of having the green on the bottom versus the pink on the bottom. Both look amazing and fabulous. And I'm going to get them dried off and then we are going to head into our project. All right, now it's time to take our beautiful prints and trim them down. Um, as you can see, there's a part of it that has kind of a hexagon shape. And so I wanted to stick with that theme. And I happen to have this um, punch from, I think it's Fiskars. I'm going to guess probably because it's orange and white. Um, and just punching out um, holes. I thought I had it dried all the way, but apparently that little corner was not dry all the way. And what's great about using um, a stencil like this is I am cutting out places uh, or portions of it and because of the different varying colors and the different varying shapes it looks like I am punching from a bunch of different um, different prints but I'm really not they're all you know two prints that took us what like five minutes um, and so I also have this print that I did earlier um, it, it is actually done on a piece of parchment paper with that same blue and green that I used and I'm just trimming it down to make it my background. I thought I could do like the scissor cutty technique. It doesn't work. Or it kind of did, but I didn't realize that until I'd gotten all the way through it. Um, I like this particular um, doing it on parchment paper. It's similar to the deli paper technique, but um, my store didn't have deli paper, so I thought I would try parchment. Um, however, it is thicker than your deli paper and I feel like maybe it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a I guess coating on it and so um, I feel like the paint doesn't stick as well as it would to a deli paper but it was still a fun technique to try and it works really great as this particular background for this project and um, I'm just applying some uh, gel medium down and trying to figure out the best position to get my background going but the the parchment paper is great because it gives it um, a little bit of texture um, and um, you can see I have this great kind of, I don't know if it's watercolor kind of looking background, I don't know, just abstracty background. Um, and I'm just going to make sure it's all secured down. It does wrinkle a little bit, um, but I kind of think that's great because it does add more texture um, and adds a little more just, you know, just visual interest to the finished page. And I'm making sure my edges are glued down really, really well. I think it's super fun to try different uh, bases and mediums um, on your drill press plate. So grab something. Don't be afraid to use your fabric. Don't be afraid to use different kinds of paper. Um, you know, there are tons of techniques here on our, our YouTube channel um, or in our Facebook group uh, for gel press. Um, of people just trying all sorts of cool things um, like image transfers, um, trying with deli paper, with parchment paper, on fabric. And so it's just, we, we have a long standing kind of, I don't know, joke mantra. I don't know what you call it, that we're the brand that plays well with everyone. So we always just like to try fun things and try new things and um, see if it works out for you. Um, so now I'm just going to trim that uh, print that I'm using for my background and getting that just smooth to the edge. And apparently it's really awkward to cut that particular corner because my hand is real close to the camera there. Sorry about that, y'all. I'm getting a real close of my watch. <laughs> so I've got my background and now I'm just going to figure out the best way to put my little hexagons down. And just kind of figure out the best way for them to flow. And I love them so much. I'm like, I love this color combo. Um, I love the different patterns. They're just fun. I honestly have not done just a straight up Bible journaling page, or not a regular journaling page in a long time because um, I tend to lean towards more Bible journaling and that kind of stuff. So this was a really great chance just to do something Maybe a little different than my normal. I mean, the color scheme is my normal, um, except it's a little more, um, I guess, distressed than my normal bright colors. So it was really great to get back a little bit to my art journaling roots, which is kind of 
um, how I started out whenever I started doing um, more mixed media art and less like scrapbooking kind of art. And so this was really a super fun project to do and just be able to play with these great prints and test out some stuff with some parchment paper was really cool. So I'm just adhering those down by putting some gel press underneath, or gel press, some gel medium underneath, and then some gel medium on top, um, just to adhere it down. 